Landscape burn probability quantifies the relative likelihood and intensity of a fire occurring under a fixed set of weather and fuel moisture conditions. This type of modeling is most often used for fuel treatment planning to predict where fires are most likely to occur and what the intensity will be if or when they do. This facilitates strategic placement of treatments based on the findings. In this video, we'll walk through an example run and briefly summarize the outputs. The landscape burn probability model is accessed in the playground in the model drop-down menu. Select it and click Create Run. Choose a landscape for your run from the drop-down list. You can choose any landscape you created or edited or create a new one. To speed modeling times, landscapes with a combined extent and buffered area over 250,000 acres undergo an automated resampling step once the model run is submitted. The resolution will be between 60 meters and 150 meters, depending on landscape size. Next, populate the wind, crown fire, and fuel moisture fields to represent a problem fire or worst case condition. Some examples could include 90th percentile conditions or above, or conditions representative of a past local fire that resulted in a blow up. If you don't have any of these, you can contact a local fire manager for this information or you can run an Auto 97 summary report on your landscape and use those conditions. For the simulation time section, input the burn period length in hours. Because we're representing problem fire conditions, your burn period should reflect the active burning period of wildfires for the area under extreme condition. Next, you'll input spotting. This is used by the model to determine if embers are launched and whether launched embers will land. Spotting probability in IFTDIS is set to a default of 20%, which is recommended for most scenarios. However, this value can be changed to any number between 0 and 100% if needed. Entering 100% means that all points on the landscape where crown fire is initiated will launch embers. A value of 0, in essence, turns spotting off. Next, give your run a descriptive name and click Run. Your run may take anywhere from 15 minutes to several hours to complete, depending on landscape size the model inputs you entered, and how many other users are using the landscape burn probability model. You can check your run status in the queue by selecting your run and viewing the right-hand panel. The system will send you an email when your model run is complete. You can also check its status in the modeling playground, and you can use the number of ignitions and percent area burned in the right-hand panel to help gauge model progress. Upon completion, burn probability, conditional flame length, and integrated hazard will be viewable in Map Studio. Let's take a moment to look at each of our outputs. Burn probability quantifies the likelihood of a fire occurring under a fixed set of weather and fuel moisture conditions. Warm colors like red indicate areas of highest burn probability, while cooler colors indicate lower burn probability. Conditional flame length is an estimate of the average flame length for all the fires that burn a given point on the landscape under a fixed set of weather and fuel moisture conditions. Integrated hazard combines the two outputs, burn probability and conditional flame length, into a single characteristic that can be mapped. In FTDIS, we use this matrix to map integrated hazard. We can see that burn probability and integrated hazard are dynamic and scale dependent, for example, if we change the extent, the binning will change to display the range of output values within the new landscape extent. Masks can also be added post-modeling and used for this as well. In addition to Map Studio, you can also navigate to Workspace and generate a summary report for the outputs. If you need to use information in other applications, you can go into Workspace and click Download for a multi-banded GeoTIFF file that also contains additional outputs such as proportion of flame lengths, fuel moistures, and mid-flame wind speed. The download package also includes symbology files, a flame map input file, and fire size list. These make it easy to open and view outputs in ArcMap with a similar display as shown in Map Studio, as well as rerunning landscape burn probability in flame map. In summary, because the landscape burn probability model spatially identifies relative burn probabilities across the landscape, it can help you prioritize and strategically place treatments using the best available science. This has been a short introduction to the landscape burn probability model. For more information, you can go to the Help Center and read about the landscape burn probability model in the modeling section.